Okay, so in the last video, we were looking at variables that were numerical, right? And we did the dot plot, we did the stem plot, and we did the histogram, and then we did an example. So now let's go ahead and do the categorical variable. So the categorical variable, we've only done a contingency table, and that was just looking at two different variables. But what about individual variables, individual categorical variables? So uh, let's go ahead and, and look at those. So the first one is bar, a bar chart. And basically what a bar chart is, it's very, very simple. Um, it's very similar to histogram. The only thing is that a bar chart, that something that's, oh, whoa, what happened here? This is a very big yellow. Uh, the only thing that's different here, is this all the colors that I can have? Hmm, I don't know, hold on, let me pause it for now. Okay, okay so let me use this color. Okay, yay, okay. So. The bar chart, the only thing that's different about this and the histogram is that the bar chart actually has spaces in between the categories. In between categories. So make sure that you do not, uh, you leave the st space. So here in this case was, I don't know if you guys can see that, but let me see if I can try to zoom in. Oh, whoa, okay. Um, you can see that this is movie preference. So it starts with action, this is action, this is drama, horror, uh, romantic comedy, and science fiction. So these are separated. And then the bar charts are just, um, that's just all it is because there are no individual values. You're just breaking them up into categories. And then on the y-axis, I have frequencies. Now you can also break it down as relative frequency, but you can just leave it as, as frequency. Okay, so in the next one, right, is another type of, of well, this is basically a, a bar chart, but it's, it's now broken up into slices of a pie. So notice here, action is still, you know, it's now in terms of a pie. So you can kind of see, um, how it really how the, the piece of the pie compares to everything else and then what you have here you have a legend that tells you first of all the number of of observations so the 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 frequency of that particular item and the and the percentage so this is actually really really good now if you didn't have this legend it would be a little bit difficult to figure it out because you would just have to kind of visually see okay well rom-coms rom are very similar to actions but just based on um on the size and you know also but how big are they are they is it just by a small percentage in this case it's turned out to be the same but when you look at it visually you know your eyes can kind of play tricks on you so you have to be very very careful when it comes down to which one is better I would say a bar chart is usually better because you can kind of see the frequency on an x and y axis and the uh, on the y axis and then the x axis you can see each individual um category so um yeah okay so there's pros and cons to them the pie chart looks really pretty though um okay so those are the two different types now uh something that you have to be very careful with these are uh, the fact that some of them can be very misleading. So for example, here is a problem. So here, graph number one uh, tells you, um, both graphs are actually the same thing, but graph number one, notice that the graphs are a little bit differently. Uh, it says that hot dogs actually, people prefer to eat hot dogs instead of pizza and hamburgers. Whereas graph number two is kind of about the same, right? So which one's correct? Well, if you look here, let's look at the axes. Here, the y-axis is very extrapolated, right? There's no zero, right? There's no origin, so there's no zero. It doesn't start with a zero, right? And everything else is by fives, right? So everything is very, very compartmentalized. Whereas graph number two, you know, it starts at zero. Everything, it seems like a, you know, from zero to 100, 100 to 200, right? So it's not like small, um, small increments. So you have to be very careful when you look at that because people out there will purposely do this to say that there actually is a preference when in reality there really is none. So you have to be very careful when it comes to those, these types of graphs. So, uh, just be very, very careful. Uh, when it comes to that. 
Um, okay, so let's do an example. So uh, example says the 2000, the 2012 general so social sur survey, I can't even read. Okay. Ask this response, respondents to report their political party affiliation. The graphs show the results for 879 men. Okay, so which political party affili affiliation has the most men? Okay, so this is what we're going to have to look at both of these graphs together. So if you look at uh, which, so notice we have two different graphs. Now, which one has the most men? Well, it really depends, right? Both graphs tell you exactly the same thing, right? These two tell you exactly the same thing. Okay, time for a new color. Let's look at something else. Let's do this color. Okay, so both uh, both graphs. Oh, what, what's going on? Click. Okay, so both of them tell you exactly the same thing. Now, which one is 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 better to look at? Okay, well, we're looking for which one has. Uh, had the most men well usually the one that's higher or which one's the one that has the most area well if you look here this is kind of hard to read right it can maybe be this one or it can maybe be this one you know it kind of looks like this one's a little bit bigger but we're not quite sure right so let's go ahead and look at the bar graph well the bar graph actually tells you based on the height right instead of this area and you can see that this one is probably the one that's highest right and has a higher men so it's democrat not strong so I'm going to write Democrat, Dem, not strong. So this one has the most men. And then part B, what political party affiliation has the second highest number of men? Well, it's much easier to see it here, right? Because then you can just go here to Republican, not strong, right? Republican, not strong, right? And we should technically get the same thing from the pie chart. But notice that, you know, still we rise to that problem where, you know, it's kind of difficult to see, right? Especially when we don't have a legend with the percentages and everything else, right? So it's a little bit hard to read. So that's just my, my take on that. So when it says, is it easier to determine with the bar chart or the pie chart? Well, in this case, it would probably be with the bar or the bar chart. It's much easier to determine which one um, is highest and which one is lowest. So basically, in the end, um, I I showed you guys all these different types of graphs, right? And I gave you guys a little bit of problems. So if we go back to, I don't know what that was. If we go back to, um, where is it? Here, variables. If we go back to our variables, what we had numerical and categorical, these were the, the different types of of graphs that we have for categorical and also for numerical, right? So just be able to read a graph, be able to describe what the graph looks like, and then you should all be set. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's it for, that's all I have for right now. I will send one more video, and that video actually is more on on Stack Crunch. Um, so you can take a look at it if you'd like. Um, Actually, no, never mind. I won't send you guys a video. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and 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 leave it like this with these three videos. I think this should be enough. And in Stack Crunch, I'll go ahead and do it in the lecture. So, um, yeah, that's it. Email me if you have any questions. And remember that you have a quiz on, if you are in my Monday class, you will have a quiz on Monday. Uh, if you are in my Tuesday class, you have a quiz on Tuesday. All right.